floor, really. Oh, we're gonna wait for the plane to come over. Hooks can't control everything. I, I'm so sorry. No, it's the plane. Just the plane. Oh, it's the plane. You, you, you apologizing for the plane, babe? Now nah, you're gonna. It's, it's Lynetta. Oh, hello. It's Lynetta. Hello. Good day, YouTube. JD here, your new sub for Tuesdays. This week we are supposed to do our formal introduction video um, and basically say who we are. Uh, personally, I am more of a geeky type person. I do a lot of research and read a lot of articles about random science things. Speaking of war, I'm a bit of a film critic. I do try to see as many films as I can. Uh, I recently saw a film, American Sniper. In the American Sniper film, it's got a lot of problems, but um, it did have a few philosophical undertones. Uh, one of my favorites was uh, a, a part where the father kind of instills in his son uh, this idea that there are three types of people in the world. And he says to his son, there are sheep, there's uh, sheep dogs, and then there's wolves. And he tells his son that if, he, uh, if his son becomes a wolf, he's going to beat him. And basically the main idea of the story is that sheepdogs exist to protect sh sheep from wolves and wolves are the bad people in the world, people who would be considered pure evil. Um, and I personally feel that that kind of hit a chord with me because I kind of see myself as being more of a sheepdog. I don't like to see people um, being harmed. I don't like to stand by and do nothing when they're basically being taken advantage of or someone is totally just doing something wrong with somebody. So I see myself as a sheepdog. That strong drive to protect people pretty much pushed me into energy work. Uh, when I was a kid, my mother was a prison guard and every day she would go into this maximum security prison with all these violent criminals and I would uh, give her a hug. But before I gave her the hug, I would uh, create this imaginary ball of yellow light that would come from me and cover her and protect her while she was at work. And a few uh, months after that, I started to, to develop the characteristic tingling sens sensations that uh, a lot of energy work people are familiar with. And that pretty much counted, that pretty much pushed me into energy work and the energy work of protecting people. I meditate frequently and I do shamanic journeys. Uh, you probably want to look at my personal channel so that way I can talk more about that, more of the shamanic journey angle. And lastly, I'm a part-time film student. Hey guys, Aldo Mario back for the final main host spots for The Pagan Perspective. By now, I'm sure you've heard The Pagan Perspective is going to be uh, no more uh, for the most part. I mean, from what I understand, the information that was communicated to us is that um, they are going to be doing they're going to be archiving all of the videos. The videos will still be available. Um, comments will still be available for the videos from this year. Um, and, and that the, all of the hosts are pretty much going their own ways and going in back into their main channels anyway. Um, so if you have been a fan, if you followed um, you know, my particular style of paganism, my interest in things, I implore you to go ahead and click on my main channel down below subscribe hit that bell icon so you can be notified of whenever I post a video um, also I have to have my social media accounts down there uh, you should find a link down there to my Twitter you will also find a link down there to my uh, Facebook page where I um, will post uh, links to keep you guys updated on my blog or any other projects that I currently have going on um, so yeah this is just basically time for us to say goodbye and I think in order to do that properly I kind of want to talk you guys through my evolution um, as a pagan uh, over the time of when I became a substitute host on the pagan perspective became a main host and now where I am today uh, where we are with the end of things as far as the pagan perspective is concerned the, the pagan perspective should return in some form but it's not clear to us right now what that form is I do know that they are looking at doing something sometime next year so I don't know if it's gonna be YouTube I don't know if they're just gonna bring in new people I have no idea but I do know that at, in its current form this is it there's only gonna be a few more videos and um, it'll be over for the current set of hosts that are together right now so when I first joined the Pagan Perspective, um, I considered myself to be a um, eclectic Wiccan witch. And then over time, um, I changed. Um, I started to pour in more eclecticism, studied more uh, religion, studied more magic. And 
uh, where I was back then uh, and where I am today is completely different. I mean, for example, um, I moved on to shamanism. I did a, quite a bit of time um, looking into uh, the path that was known as the men who love men. It was a very powerful path and I noticed that it kind of still has a small circle. I just never really entered that circle. I kind of went forth and looked at other areas of magic and things. It was still very big on uh, meditation, sh sh shamanic journeys. As it stands today, um, I have moved forward more into um, magic that involves uh, working with the uh, dead spirits of the dead. Um, I work a lot with different realms that connect with that. Even when I first began, it was more of a, a Wiccan kind of thing where it was the patron and matron deity. Like, like now it's more where it's like actually three. So things have changed quite a bit. Uh, it's a bit of a, a more unique way to practice, I would say. The Peg Respective received a question on spirit keeping some time ago. And um, at the time, I didn't really have a connection with it. I figured that, hey, you know, I've made thought forms before or what I perceived to be thought forms in the past. And I said, hey, I'll just stick with my own brand. I'll stick with my own things and I won't venture out and use these services on the, on different websites. Well, uh, this year, uh, especially during COVID, um, it, it had me trying out different types of magic. And now I'm working a lot more with angels. I'm working a lot more with uh, Kabbalistic um, magic things, seals from Solomon's time, um, working with high, high musician magic actually so um, my title has kind of changed a bit from one moment I was the techno shaman and things but what has remained true since I changed my name from JD to Alduin is that um, I am very much into tra traversing different realms going through different astral portals and things and making contact and working with different spirits so in reaching out and branching out and becoming more comfortable with spirit keeping I was very, very uh, sh shocked, amazed, and floored, really. Oh, we're gonna wait for the plane to come over. Hooks can't control everything. I I'm so sorry. No, it's the plane. Just the plane. Oh, it's the plane. You, you, you apologizing for the plane, babe? No, you're gonna- It's, it's Lynetta. Oh, hello. It's Lynetta. Hello. So yeah, getting more comfortable with spirit keeping. Um, these beings are amazing, guys. I mean, the idea of spirit keeping is that these beings were alive on different astral realms at some point, right? And uh, they passed away either through war or natural causes in their own astral realms. And when you decide to become a keeper, you basically allow them into your life and they can, on their astral realms, they can bring such protection, uh, they can help you work with your psychic and physical gifts. They can influence you to actually produce more art. It's really amazing. Like they literally are people all to themselves. And um, I am it's just literally floored. I wish I had more time to share this with the whole audience that is the Pagan Perspective. Um, I know you guys who are interested in this, you're gonna follow me. I know you guys are gonna jump over to my uh, Facebook page, hit that like button on the Facebook page as well. Just stay up, let's just stay connected because over time, I have been putting up different projects and, and trying to work toward getting those done. And if you guys have been following me, if you stuck with me, you've known that I've said that I was going to do these things. And for whatever reason, life happened and I never did it. However, if you look at this channel right now, you'll see a link to my personal website. My personal website is up. I'm going to chalk it up to other folks who have joined my spiritual team from Spirit Keeping. These guys really want you to be, be successful. So. They have pushed energies. They have inspired me. They've kind of sent little whispers here and there. And you hear this a lot, guys. Like if you hear about um, different authors, sometimes if you do enough research, you'll hear that these authors have kind of had help from other beings for thousands of years. Um, automatic writing, folks, is, 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 is another thing that is something that people have pushed uh, out there saying, hey, you know, I, I didn't write this book by myself. It was spirits. Well, spirit keeping can be that for you folks. I know when you first look at some of the spirit keeping websites, it can kind of be a bit daunting because you're like, hey, well, you know, this price is like really, really low. Cause I'm talking about the ones where, 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 where the prices are reasonable guys. I'm talking about things like creepy hollows, right? Those guys um, keep the prices of the bindings of these beings at reasonable cost, right? I'm not talking about something on eBay or something on some other website where it's like $200, $300, right? 
Creepy Hollows does have listings that, that are that high, but let me make this clear. They're very, very specialized folks. Like these are beings that go above and beyond and they have uh, a lot more difficulty with binding them to a human. So those cost a bit more, but for the standard, the way they've got um, angel bindings and things up there, you're not gonna pay more than 10 to $15 if you wish to um, have a connection with the spirit of an angel or so, so on and so forth. So it's been a huge, um, boost, I would say, to my practice to be able to have insight from um, beings who have so much um, experience with magic, spells, war, protection. Um, it's been a great change, especially during COVID, because COVID has brought so much dread. It's brought so much depression, uh, anxiety. It also seems that um, now in this current time that we have right now, we, there's a lot of racial tension and uh you know and, and understandably so i mean you if you remember looking at that political video that i put up here on the pain perspective um many people were finding it very difficult to deal with those emotions um african-american people and uh, caucasian people alike so like everybody was finding like their feelings with those with those videos and i, I would say spirit keeping can kind of help you uh, with that because depending on which beings you choose they can help you process these emotions a little better. So um, That's been a big help a big uh, Advancement I would say in the way I particularly practice It's it's really been a true blessing now